we're going to be talking about the differences between your standard home sewing machine and an industrial machine, and I want to share my experience as the owner of both. Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. And I wanna have a little sewing machine talk today. This one is going to be aimed at the beginner to intermediate sewers. And this goes into some questions that I get all the time here on the channel. Now I have a lot of sewing machines. In fact, I have a few you probably don't even know I have. I have probably eight or nine sewing machines, including the Brother PE 900 I just picked up, which is a whole other deal. But I want to talk about two machines in particular that I've had for a while. This one, the Brother CS7000i. I have featured this many times here on the channel with Learn to Sew tutorials and the Juki DDL8700, which is an industrial sewing machine. I picked that up last year. So I've owned both of them long enough to get used to them, see what works, what doesn't, what I like, what I don't like. So I want to talk about both of these and hopefully help you if you are in the market for a sewing machine or to upgrade your machine. I wanna to try to help steer you in the right direction. Also a quick disclaimer, I am not a sewing machine tech or a sewing machine expert. I am simply a sewing enthusiast sharing my experiences with you. I also have zero association with Brother or Juki. I do have some links down below in the description box. They are affiliate, but neither of these companies are sponsors in any way. And I purchased these machines myself with my own money. One thing I want to say right off the bat is that I think literally if you are at starting point zero, I can see how it'd be really easy for you to buy the wrong sewing machine for your needs. And what I mean by that is that I've heard so many stories of people, especially during the pandemic when people were trying to sew masks and whatnot, people would just go to Walmart or shop on Amazon, pick some random sewing machine, and then maybe get home and realize that they don't like it. It's not comfortable to sew on. It doesn't work well for their needs. So I really want this video to kind of go more in depth on that because I think it's something that we don't talk about enough. Overall, I think Brother makes quite a few sewing machines machines that are well suited to beginners and they're at a very affordable price such as this Brother CS7000i. It's fairly basic. It is computerized. It is very entry level in terms of price. It has quite a few different stitches. It comes with many different feet. It's easy to use. It has some features that are nice like a needle threader, needle up, down. And I think for a beginner, I think this is a pretty well-rounded machine. But then again, I get a lot of questions here on the channel where people are like, like, can this sew leather? Can this sew denim? I'm trying to sew sequins. Will this work for that? And my answer to that would be it technically can work with machines like this, but I wouldn't say that this machine would be the right tool for those types of projects. So if you are trying to sew anything heavy duty, like you wanna sew all jeans or you want to make leather bags, this is probably not the machine I would recommend for that. But I would also say in turn to that, that those types of projects, I wouldn't necessarily consider those for beginners. I'm not sure if those are the first types of projects I would recommend. I think those fabrics can be a bit difficult to work with, especially when you are literally brand new to sewing. I would pick projects that are more beginner friendly, but then that goes to say you don't even know what projects are beginner friendly when you're new. Hopefully this video and other resources like this can help you if you are just starting your journey. I do think the Brother CS7000i is good for a lot of different types of projects. I think it can sew small quilts, clothing, home decor items. I've tried it out with quite a few different fabrics. I put a walking foot on mine and it makes my life infinitely easier. But if I was going to be sewing jeans all day or making leather bags, my life would be hell if I was trying to use this machine for those purposes because I just don't think they're the right tool for the job. And that is really important is having the right machine for the right project. Let's run down some quick specs for the Brother CS7000i. It is a computerized sewing machine with 70 built-in stitches, with some decorative heirloom and quilting stitches. It has a variety of automatic features, such as needle threading, an automatic drop-in bobbin system. It has a maximum sewing speed of 850 stitches per minute, so it is good for a wide range of sewing projects. 
Moving on to the Juki DDL8700, let's go over those specs. This is a single needle lock stitch machine designed for light to medium weight fabrics. It has a maximum sewing speed of 5,500 stitches per minute, and it is good for more high volume production. It has a very spacious work area, a large bobbin capacity, which allows for longer sewing machines without having to stop and reload the bobbin. Now, this is not a computerized machine. The version I have has a servo motor making it much more quiet. Mine also came with a table. Now this is a very heavy machine. It is a very simple machine so it can be easily repaired. No computerized parts meaning less that can go wrong. This is also a super heavy machine and it only does one stitch but it does that one stitch very well. Obviously these machines are very different but you can actually do many of the same projects on either one. So I think there can be pros and cons to either. So I want to talk about these because you might be like, well, why do I need either one? So I want to try to help break down my own thought process and buying them. I've had this machine for quite a while. My honest thoughts are, I think this is a solid sewing machine for the money. I've been able to sew many really cool things on the machine. It's easy to use, lightweight, portable, great price, very versatile. I love that you can put a walking foot on it. All of the feet snap on. It's very, very user friendly, I believe, especially for beginners. I learned to sew in home ec in middle school and the sewing machines I remember sewing on were very frustrating to use. I don't find that with this Brother CS7000i, it is pretty easy to sew on and I find I have a good experience. Now, since I've gotten the Juki DDL8700, I'm gonna be completely transparent. That is my current favorite sewing machine. I didn't expect to like it so much, it's kind of a dream to sew on. So I wanna talk about that a little bit because again, while I like both machines, I have noticed that I've been gravitating towards using the Juki for more of my everyday sewing. Now, some of the differences are obviously the Juki is super heavy, not portable at all. If you do have to get it serviced, it's going to be pretty difficult to transport because this thing is heavy. I think the average person is probably not going to be able to carry it by themselves. It does come off the table. Again, the head of the sewing machine, like it's a two person job for sure. So if you're living alone and you are not like some sort of bodybuilder, you're probably gonna have a hard time picking it up. It is a little bit intimidating because it's so large and because there's more stuff to do like oiling the machine and like the maintenance, but I've seen quite a few online tutorials on maintaining and repairing the Jukies. So I think there are a lot of free resources out there if you are into that sort of thing. It's obviously going to be worth getting the Juki serviced. Now, if this brother craps out on me, I'm not gonna get it serviced. This is kind of a throwaway machine as they say in the industry because if this breaks or something goes wrong, you're just gonna get another one. Now, I'm pretty happy I got a pretty good price on this machine and if this lasts like five years, I would say, hey, I got my money's worth. I've had this for three to four years now and these brother machines really don't require any ongoing maintenance. I don't believe you're supposed to oil them or anything like that, so you pretty much just use it. I sometimes will clean out the bobbin area and that's about it. I really haven't had any issues or headaches with it. It's been fairly maintenance free, which is nice. If something goes wrong with this, the money that you would spend getting it checked out and fixed wouldn't be worth it. So I would probably just get another one. I mean, I don't need another sewing machine. I have plenty, but this is not a sewing machine that is worth getting fixed. And I think that's one thing when you start getting into sewing, I think for outsiders who aren't really into this, they don't really understand the price of sewing machines or anything about it. So I think to the outsider, they might think $250 for a sewing machine is expensive, not realizing that that's more of the entry level price for a sewing machine. And that's not even close to the maximum spend limit you could pay for a sewing machine. I mean, there are sewing machines that are $30,000, not this one. I've seen them. I obviously am not gonna buy them. And that's something I find kind of wild about now being into sewing is that I think for people who don't sew, they just have no idea of the prices of sewing machines. So they might look at this and assume this is a top of the line expensive sewing machine, not realizing this is super entry level and that the sky is the limit as to how much you wanna pay for a sewing machine. This is literally probably one of the cheapest machines on the market. Obviously there are cheaper ones, I personally wouldn't really go below like $150 for a sewing machine. As far as 
new. Now, if you're gonna go used, you can obviously get some great deals on gently used sewing machines and you could definitely pay less than that. But as far as the new ones, I personally wouldn't go super, super cheap. I would probably go to like the $200 mark and up if you are buying new. And let's get more into the Juki because I really do want to talk about my experience with it because I love this machine. Now this machine is obviously significantly more expensive than the Brother CS7000i. You can get these from a dealer, you can get them from Amazon, but there's really no customer support so you do have to be mindful for that. I got mine from a like local dealer down in Sarasota and I'll link to some of my previous videos about the Juki because it's been a, it's been a really good experience overall. I'm glad I bought the machine. It does take up a lot of space, so you do have to keep that in mind. If you live in a tiny studio apartment on the 10th floor of some building with no elevator, that may not be the machine for you. I think if you sew a lot, this is a great machine. If you do like a small business, you're trying to start a clothing line, you want to make a lot of something. I find it's really comfortable for me to use, which was unexpected. I thought it was going to be clunky and I just haven't found that. I love the feet, how simple it is. I love the stitch it produces. This does take a different ecosystem of needles and whatnot, so you can't use the same needles and feet for the Brother Machine than you can on the Juki. They are like, I think slightly longer needles, something like that. So they are different and I've had to purchase additional supplies that were compatible with the Juki, but I really enjoy sewing on it. It's so just nice to sew on. It's got a lot of power to it. It can sew fast. I have it on like the slowest, slowest stitch speed. I think I'd like 350 stitches a minute. I just don't personally like sewing super fast, but it can go as high as 5,500 stitches per minute. Now this machine does not have all the bells and whistles. It doesn't have like a thread cutter, doesn't have like the needle up down. I think you can purchase that feature additionally. And there are different iterations of that same machine. I think they have one for like a walking foot. They've got another one for more heavy duty stuff. And I believe they have some feature that does the needle up down. So if you want the needle to stop in the down position, it will, or up position, it will do that. I believe you can, for an additional cost, you can purchase uh, like, like you can kind of add on that feature or something like that. And the most exciting thing is I was able to figure out how to add the walking foot to the Juki, which was really important to me because I'm addicted to the walking foot. I also have another video about that previously and how I use the walking foot, but I had to kind of figure it out because Juki does not specifically make a walking foot for that model. I had to use a walking foot for a slightly different model and then modify my machine with an additional screw to get that to work. But now that I've been able to get a walking foot on it, I feel like it will be great for quilting, especially because this machine has a huge throat space. So there's a lot of room between the needle and the arm. So I could quilt some pretty large projects on it and that's exciting. So I'm very interested to try some of those out more in the future. But I have noticed that just with my everyday sewing, I've been just automatically going to the Juki. So I think that's a sign that that's my current favorite machine to sew on. Again, no, no shade to the brothers. I still love this machine too, but I think I've just really come to feel uh, comfortable and I just really enjoy my just everyday sewing on the Juki. And another thing you should know is that on computerized machines, you can typically change the needle position. So if your needle starts like in the middle, you can actually have the needle go over here or go over here. So it can be nice if you're trying to like top stitch and you want it a certain distance from the edge of your fabric so you can line it up with the edge of your presser foot like I do. Now on the Juki, you cannot do that. But one thing I've found a way around that is by, pur I purchased like an additional set of off-brand feet. Now this is a high shank foot system. So you have to buy feet specifically that work for the machine. So again, you can't interchange these parts. I just wanna make that clear. But I purchased a bunch of off-brand feet and they're of different widths. So that hasn't been that big of a deal because I've just been switching the feet and then putting on like wider or skinnier feet depending on how much I want that stitch to be from the needles. So there's definitely ways around that. So, and though that kit I bought was fairly inexpensive, 
expensive. Uh, the walking foot, I forgot how much it was. I'll try to link some of my supplies below though. But again, these are different machines. I obviously think a beginner, of like a new beginner probably shouldn't get an industrial sewing machine. I think it's more suited for an intermediate sewist or someone like if you're in fashion school or you want to sew your whole wardrobe, maybe something like that. But there's also no reason you couldn't do that on this machine. I do find though that I, I just really enjoy sewing on the Juki. So if that's something you might enjoy and you sew a ton, it might be worth the investment. I think if you sew the occasional project and you sew a wide variety of things, I think this brother would perfectly suit your needs just fine. I don't think you need to buy more sewing machine than you need or can afford. And obviously we all have different budgets. So your budget may be brother, your budget may be Juki, your budget may be the $20,000 Bernina, who knows? Just because you have a smaller budget doesn't mean you can't get a great machine because you definitely can. Because I'm getting this question so often on my sewing machine videos, I do want to reiterate, neither of these machines are specifically meant for heavy duty sewing like denim or leather. Yes, both could technically handle the occasional project like that, but if you are looking to sew mainly those types of materials and do very bulky projects, I would specifically look into a heavy duty sewing machine. They're definitely out there. I also have a sail right that I never use that is specifically a walking foot machine that can handle denim, can handle canvas, can handle leather. So I might, maybe I'll try to get back into that, but I don't know, I've mentioned this before, I just don't find that machine very comfortable to sew on. So I've been kind of like avoiding it, which is probably bad, but hey, that's, I'm just keeping it real here. But neither the Brother or the Juki DDL 8700 are just meant for like that type of workload all day, every day. So I just want to be clear because again, I know I'm probably going to get that question again. So I wanted to try to answer it in advance. All right, so to kind of round things up, the Brother CS7000i or any other type of entry-level computerized home sewing machine Good for the hobbyist who sews occasionally, you want to do a lot of different types of projects. Maybe you're new to sewing, you don't know how much you want to spend. If you're just getting started, I would actually probably not spend a ton of money on sewing unless you get into it a little bit more, you know you're going to stick with it. And another thing I've experienced myself is that the types of projects I have been sewing has changed over the years. When I started out, I was really doing quilts. Now I'm doing a lot of other things. Now I'm doing embroidery. Maybe you're doing clothes. So I think you also need to get far enough into this world to know what you really want to sew. So if you are going to do a variety of things, but you don't do a lot of like high volume, I would say a home sewing machine would be perfect for you. You do not need an industrial sewing machine in order to do what you need to do. I think a machine like this or something similar, I also have an Eversone Sparrow 25. I've also used a Brother SC400, I believe. And all of those machines do the job. They do it well. They're pretty easy to use. And this is a, a pretty affordable machine. Now, if you're going the industrial route, this is for someone who sews a lot, you do some high volume sewing, you have the space, the budget, you want to invest in a more reliable machine long term, and you want something that produces a very nice straight stitch, I think that machine is a good option. It's not terribly expensive, but it's certainly more expensive than the Brother CS7000i. But again, I think the Juki is probably for more of an intermediate sewist than a beginner. Again, there is there was a little bit of a learning curve with it, I'm not gonna lie. It does not have a lot of features, does not have those computerized bells and whistles, but on the upside, they are very repairable. I think the longevity of that machine will be a lot longer than this one. Again, one of the downsides though, super heavy, need a lot of space for it. And if you do get it serviced, you're probably gonna have to spend more money on that to have someone either come to your house or you're gonna have to get somewhere. But you're also gonna have to have a vehicle that can transport that machine and it is ridiculously heavy. So those are just some of my thoughts on owning both a home sewing machine and owning a more industrial sewing machine. If you have both or if you have any strong thoughts, let me know down below in the comments. I also want to say a big thank you for everyone who has been commenting on my last video about the YouTube channel. I really appreciate all of your comments and I was really touched by all of the memories we've shared together and why you started watching this channel, what types of videos you like. And also, I saw all the responses for the poll I did on the community tab about whether I should try that uh, Ditto sewing pattern projector 
available at Joann's. I think what I've decided for now is that I'm probably not going to buy it right away. A lot of you made some great points, like that you felt like the subscription model was a little cricket-y and you didn't like that you were limited to just the patterns provided by that company. And I would agree. I think that not opening it up for like third party pattern designers or using existing PDF patterns you already have is super limiting, especially since the price of that item is like 800 bucks. So I think what I'm going to do for now is hold off on purchasing it probably, but I'm going to look to see what I'm going to keep tabs on it and see what the pattern selection is like and also to see like what they do down the road. Are there going to be any sales on it? If I can get it on sale, I think that would be make it more worthwhile to try out a review. And I also just want to see like maybe what happens when it what happens with the rollout. But I, I'm very curious about the product. But yeah, it is a lot of money to invest for a YouTube review for a product that just on first impressions is not something I would buy if I didn't have a YouTube channel. So I really appreciate all the votes and the comments uh, just because it gave me something to, th something to think about and I'm still considering picking it up just because I'm curious to see how good or bad it is. One interesting feature that I was pretty intrigued by is that you could actually do pattern adjustments in the software. So you could take one of the patterns that are included. Oh yeah, and it is subscription based. So that's a little hokey. So you not only have to buy the $800 sewing pattern projector, but you also need to subscribe. Yeah, creating a recurring revenue model there to their like pattern library, something like that. So that was a pretty immediate turnoff for me. And I know it was for a lot of you because you told me so, but I did kind of like that you could take the patterns and tweak your measurements. So you could input your own measurements and it would spit out a pattern that's supposed to be kind of custom made for you. So I was kind of curious about that, but again, that would also depend on the quality of the patterns. Are the patterns any good? Nobody really knows. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that particular product and see where it goes, but you may see something on it down the road, but I really appreciate everyone weighing in on that. Anyways, I'm Jen for The Sewing Report. Thank you so much for watching. Check out some of my other sewing machine videos. I'll see you guys again in the next video. And remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.